Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I started this new playlist called Focus Group. In each episode I'm planning to focus on a specific team and try to analyze their game model in detail. In this very first episode I decided to start with the team that can be considered as the most successful team of the season in the big 5 European leagues so far, Bayer Leverkusen, and discuss how Chabi Alonso's team play one of the most exciting footballs in Europe. When Chabi Alonso took charge of Leverkusen, the Black and Reds were at 17th place in Bundesliga. The team was consisting of young players with good or great potential but they were making so many mistakes mainly because they were inexperienced and struggling in the league. Everybody had been expecting Xabi Alonso to become a very good head coach. Listen to Mourinho for example. Xabi uh, Alonso, his father was a manager, then he became a player, his position on the pitch and his knowledge of the game very high. He played in Spain, in England and in Germany and he was coached by Guardiola, myself, Ancelotti, Benitez. So I think if you put all this together, I think Xavi has conditions to, to be a very good coach. However, when he was hired, he only had youth coach experience at Real Madrid and head coach experience at the B team of Real Sociedad on his managerial resume. He could make a quick impact at Leverkusen though. He created a dangerous counter-attacking team that was suitable for the player profile he had at that time. His team finished the season at 6th place with the help of the great form they had between late February and early May. However, after the Spaniards spent a full preseason with his team and became one of the decision makers in the new transfers and squad building, we are now understanding what he did last season was only a short trailer of what he can offer as a manager. This season, Leverkusen turned out to be one of the most dominant sides in Europe, playing a very convincing football, holding possession, progressing through middle, counter-pressing in transitions. And when they do all of these greatly, as a result, they are creating chances, scoring goals and winning games. In the summer transfer window, Leverkusen lost their most important attacker. Musa Diaby, who finished 22-23 season with 14 goals and 9 assists, and was considered by many as the most important part of Chabi Alonso's counter-attacking team. He is an excellent dribbler and a strong 1v1 threat. However, his decision-making was not very suitable for Chabi Alonso's ideals in possession. So, Leverkusen filled Diaby's space with a completely different profile, Jonas Hoffmann. Although his physical abilities cannot be compared with Diaby, the German international is known as a very intelligent player who has a great sense of creating or finding space with his movement without the ball and by comfortably playing at multiple positions offer great versatility. Another physical player, Michel Bakker, also left the team and his space was filled with another completely opposite profile, with a La Masia graduate, Alex Grimaldo from Benfica. An extremely technical fullback or wingback, knowing positional football very well but having some defensive liabilities. In addition to these two, they captured Grani Chaka, who immediately became the leader of the team and has been perfect nailing the deep line playmaker role so far, and Victor Boniface, who immediately became the most entertaining, interesting, unpredictable striker of Bundesliga or maybe uh, of European football. So let's go a little deeper now. What makes Leverkusen special? If we look at their stats, we see that for possession and attacking stats, they are either the best or one of the best teams in Bundesliga and Europe. For example, they are leading the ranking for highest shots on targets per game and big chances created in Big 5. Also, they are the first in Bundesliga and second in Big 5 for the number of 10 plus pass sequences. So, it is worth spending some time to understand how Leverkusen are so proficient at using passes and passing sequences to progress and create these chances. Leverkusen use 4-2-4 for deep build-up, as they pass the middle of the pitch, they usually turn into a 3-2-5, and while usually preserving their structure, they use many positional rotations. Sometimes Grimaldo inverts, Wirtz plays wider, sometimes Palacios drops deeper, Kisunu pushes higher, Hoffman drops deeper, that helps them to manipulate the opponent if they prefer man-oriented approaches. However, only explaining their structure is of course not enough to explain their success in progression and chance creation. Especially against mid and low blocks, Chabi Alonso's team is really good at breaking the lines and entering into the penalty area. They want to progress through middle, which is more of a higher risk, higher reward approach compared to progressing through wider areas. Let's listen why this is the case from Guardiola. Muchos entrenadores dicen, dicen, para que no hagan contraataque, 
cuidado a pasar el balón por dentro. Claro, de afuera. Entonces, de manera de cuenta, cuidado, vale, está, está, te la compro. Entonces, si no quieres parar por dentro, la pases fuera. Pero es imposible jugar bien si el balón no pasa por dentro. Claro. Imposible. Es imposible ¿no? Tú puedes ganar, jugar. Pero todas las recepciones de la gente de delante, cuando el balón viene por dentro, vienen perfiladas. Todas vienen así para atacar. Cuando vienen de, sin pasar por el medio, todas vienen frontales, con el defensa aquí, donde sí, tú no tienes nada que hacer. Al riesgo de perderla, si la pierde estando abierto, amigo, te la metes. Ya tú decides. Lo que decíamos el entrenador. Tú decides, amigo. Tú eres entrenador. In addition, it's also riskier because your players receive more pressure compared to they do at wider areas. But it is rewarding because once you progress, the opponent defenders have to narrow. This means you can find even more space at wider areas and make dangerous runs towards blind sides of narrow opponent backline. Leverkusen used third man concept very effectively to progress through the middle. The first key factor for the effectiveness of this third man play is related to their passing motives. In a research paper published in 2014, researchers tried to understand what made Barcelona's football in that era so unique. What they found was the unique distribution of their passing patterns. They were the team using ABAC passing motif the most by far in Big Five, while their ABCD pattern score was the lowest. Of course, saying all ABCD chains are bad or all ABAC patterns are great is not correct, but in a simple way you can imagine usually a B C D pattern ends up with predictable results. It can create a flux of movement that the ball, your team and the opponent team can move towards the same direction. On the other hand, a B A C passing motif can be an interesting way to attract pressure while creating space behind the pressure line. For example, in this photo Iniesta first plays Fabregas, who attracts the back line, when Fabregas quickly plays back to Iniesta, Iniesta receives the ball with perfect body orientation to enhance his vision and minimize the time to play it behind the line of pressure, against the opponent flux. Leverkusen may not be using this pattern as commonly as that Barcelona team used, however, they use it quite effectively at decisive moments of build-up, progression and chess creation subfaces. As long as your opponent is a bit aggressive and jump on your players, this pattern can be really great at baiting the pressure and creating space behind pressure. In addition, while doing that, players can keep their intention more hidden than other common techniques to attract pressure like soul of the food and through playing against the flux, the team can out with their opponent and get a perfect chance to manipulate the rhythm of the game. In an example here, Leverkusen are using ABAC against the mid block to break the second pressure line. Here, they use it in build up to break the first pressure line. In all of them, once they break the pressure line, they are increasing the tempo to progress. Even in chance creation subways, we see Leverkusen using this concept to enter the penalty area. Next time when you watch them try to catch the ABAC patterns uh, for 5 to 10 minutes, you'll be surprised how effective they use it uh, to progress through opponent pressure lines. If the opponent prefers to stay more reactive, then Leverkusen punish them by forcing 2v1s over the players on the second pressure line. This concept is my pers personal favorite lately. Two players behind the pressure line approaches the one opponent and trap the opponent there through playing the third man with the deeper ball holder. Localization over a wide pressure line and the flow through a little hole over it. Again, once the pressure line is broken, it is the perfect time to increase the tempo and enter the final third. And again, Chabi Alonso's team used this concept at different subfaces. Even in chance creation, Van Wert made the assist to Hoffman with back heel. If the opponent tries using a more man-oriented approaches at deep areas, then Leverkusen creates space for their 1v1 threats at the center of the pitch. Victor Boniface, unexpected from his height, has a really silky touch and creates very unpredictable situations when he catches his opponent in a 1v1 situation at the center of lanes. And Wirtz, in addition to his incredible football IQ, is really good at take-ons and progressive carries, surely. And then, they also combine their skills in 2v2 situations as well, which can be extremely dangerous as the duo is placed at top 3 in attacking contributions according to Opta, one of them leading the XG and shots per game, while the other open play chances created. So, once Leverkusen progress through middle, and as we discussed, they are very effective at it, then the width they usually provide their wing backs become even more precious in final third. This is because the opponent subconsciously narrow down to defend Leverkusen's attacks, which is coming from the middle. So, in this scenario, the wider players stay at the blind zone of the opponent's fullbacks, while they have the body orientation to see opponent goal and all players in the box. 
Frimpong with his speed dive into channels, while Grimaldo, who usually joins the attack a little later than Frimpong, offers passing option and create chances through cutbacks. In the box, Hoffman has the sense to find space. He is a bit like Thomas Müller in those situations, uh, like a Rome daughter. Uh, while Wertz is really good at attacking the pocket created between fullback and centre-back once Grimaldo overlaps. And Boniface trying to find a physical advantage and space in the box. Everything is so well planned and so well organized in Leverkusen's ball progression and chance creation scenarios. The fact that Leverkusen players are always intelligent, always careful with their positions and keep their distances very carefully helps them at defensive transitions as well. The team supports their ball holder with many passing options at short distances. If they make any simple errors and lose position at opponent's half, they can efficiently, without spending so much energy, counter press to regain possession. And since they have a strong rest defense structure with usually 5 players behind the ball, even they fail at counter press, they are mostly immune to opponent counter attacks. At offensive transitions, Leverkusen are more selective to start counter attacks compared to last year. Players like Shaka, Grimaldo and Palacios usually decide quickly if there is any advantage to start the counter-attack when they regain possession in their half. If they don't see enough numbers to create danger at opponent's half, they slow down, be patient and regain their structure, otherwise they increase the tempo with a progressive pass. One interesting thing is that they constantly try counter-attacks, try to play very quick and direct after defending a set piece at their third. The return of an opponent's corner kick or wide free kick is considered to be the perfect time for them to attack. They look organized at these situations, showing obviously this is planned and used to catch opponent off guarded and out of shape. In out of possession phase, Joby Alonso's team is flexible. Mostly with the flexibility Frimpong is bringing, they can easily switch between back 5 and back 4 structures by shifting Frimpong to back line or the second line. They can do these switches not only between the games but within the games as well. When the opponent starts the game with a goal kick, they can use fully man-to-man -man press all over the pitch or they can close inner channels, push opponent to play wide and the ball side wing back jump on opponent full back or wing back while the opposite side wing back joins back line to provide plus one against opponent attackers. So this team is flexible out of position. And since they have versatile players like Hoffman, Grimaldo, Wirtz, they are also flexible in position. In addition to this, Chabi Alonso is really good at using this flexibility to gain advantage against their opponents. Their game against Bayern at Allianz Arena was a great example how Chabi Alonso's in-game tweaks create momentum and advantages for his team and just to remind you, this was a tactical battle against Thomas Tuchel, one of the best in this game when it comes to tactical knowledge and in-game tweaks. Leverkusen started this game more cautiously than normal, tried to face Bayern at mid or low blocks with a 5-2-3. However, Tuchel's team dominated the first 20 minutes by overloading the right side and switching the ball to create 2v1s over Frimpong with overlapping or underlapping Alfonso Davis and wide position Serge Gnabry. Chabi Alonso's answer to this was pretty good. He put Hoffman to left wing and pushed Frimpong to the second line and switched to a 4-4-2 out of position. By doing so, he enabled 1v1 matching over the whole field and blocked Bayern's numerical superiorities at wide radius. Bayern started struggling after this switch in position and in opposite phase with Hoffman at the left flank, this time Leverkusen started overloading left flank and finding Frimpong at large space uh, at the opposite end. But towards the end of first half, Tuchel's Bayern started to play more direct, specifically towards the half spaces at transitions. And with switching 4-4-2 in out of position, of course Leverkusen basically had less people at the center of the pitch. With the ball they tried overloading one flank and gave up from their usual go through the middle approach. And Bayern tried punishing this with these direct attacks. Created a few dangerous situations in last minutes of the first half. Xabi Alonso started the second half with a substitution by having Palacios, who is more adventurous midfielder compared to Andrich. He wanted to reignite the central progressions. Also, to deal with Bayern's transitions, he switched the approach he had in possession. Now, Hoffman started offering with at left wing and Grimaldo started inverting to the center and Leverkusen started attacking with a 3-1-4-2 formation in possession. By increasing the number of players at the middle in possession, they could block Bayern's threats in transitions and started progressing through center. 
For Bayern on the other hand, Kimmich had to leave the game due to a minor injury and as Leimer really struggled playing Kimmich's role, they started losing the control of the game. As the momentum started shifting towards Leverkusen again, Chubby Alonso made one more substitution and had Amin Adli uh, in for Frimpong. Adli could also join central combinations and Leverkusen could create many chances in the last quarter of the game. The game eventually ended 2-2 but Chubby Alonso's Leverkusen impressed everybody watching their game once again. Alonso's touches made huge impact on the game and every time he intervened, he could shift the momentum of the game towards his team. One other important thing about Chubby Alonso is that he allows his players to play in a role that they are most comfortable with, probably something he inherited from Angelotti. However, although his role distribution considers this, he can still put the pieces of the puzzle to create a well-structured team. For example, Leverkusen started both Europa League games with their two fast wingers, Adli and Tella. For these games, he asked his wingers to provide with, who are more comfortable to play at wider areas, while his fullbacks played inverted roles in possession. Or similarly, we see Grimaldo and Frimpong's role are very different at two separate ends. Or the team plays more expressive, tries riskier passes with Palacios, while tries to be more conservative with Andrić. Hoffman and Wirtz, they mostly play at half spaces, but Wirtz makes many more touches compared to Hoffman, while Hoffman uses his experience to seek for space or create space for his teammates with his movement without the ball. All of these factors excite me about Chubby Alonso's manager, Il Kayer. At the age of 41, he already proved himself that he is going to be a special head coach, and there is no doubt he will win many trophies. Can he start winning these trophies with Leverkusen this year? I think we have a reason to believe in them as they are only getting better and better each day. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked the video, please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Until next time.